This video was co-produced by Tejas Sin, who paid me to talk about this subject while I was flinging wooden trains at a wall during a live stream. Enjoy. Here's something for you to consider. If most diesel-electric locomotives are just giant generators on wheels, then is it possible to generate enough electricity to power a locomotive with something other than diesel? Purely electric locomotives do exist. Most public trams have always been powered by electricity, and some bigger engines are known to run off the grid, but these locomotives require the use of overhead wires or third rails. While this works, some countries like the US, Canada, or Russia have rail lines that can go on for hundreds of miles through the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. And as a result, setting up and maintaining third rails or power lines is very difficult. Battery-powered engines do exist, but they're never usually more than shunting engines or used on limited distances due to the sheer amount of energy required to haul a train over a prolonged distance. So what alternatives are there? Well, one alternative that's been looked into is good old atomic power. The idea first emerged from the USSR in the 1950s, as trains have always been an effective method of transporting large amounts of resources as well as people, and powering them with nuclear energy would not only save on fuel, but also allow them to travel greater distances. Russia is supposedly still considering the idea to this day, and claims to be working on a prototype engine. Naturally, America wasn't far behind, and some designs did come forward, with a few being patented. At the time, the dangers of radiation weren't really well known, and so the concept of just sticking a mini nuclear generator into a locomotive to power it didn't seem that daft. So if submarines can be powered with a nuclear battery, then why not trains? In theory, it's not a bad idea. It would significantly save on fuel, engines could run for longer periods of time without the need to stop to refuel, they'd produce little to no greenhouse gases, and could very easily put energy back into the power grid while not in use. A lot of upsides to be sure, but there are several other factors to consider about putting nuclear power on the rails. Firstly is size. Nuclear reactors aren't small things, and compacting them down is a very difficult task. Even the reactors on a nuclear submarine are surprisingly big. While it could be possible to make a reactor small enough to fit in a locomotive, the issue then becomes whether or not it's powerful enough to output the amount of energy needed to do the work it's intended for after it's been shrunk down. On top of this, even if you only needed a very little amount of radioactive material to fuel the engine, you'd still need a significant amount of shielding around it just to keep it from doing any harm to anyone. Meaning even if you managed to shrink the reactor down, you'd still need a few hundred tons of concrete and casing to stop a significant amount of the radiation from escaping, making the locomotive significantly heavier than most alternatives. This brings us on to the second problem, maintenance. A nuclear reactor is not something that's cheap or easy to repair and maintain. The savings in fuel might help balance out the cost of maintenance, but repairing a locomotive on its own is a tricky business, never mind the addition of a radioactive element and the need for a qualified scientist on hand to help you refuel it. Then comes the issue of waste fuel. Once coal is burned in a steam locomotive, you're left with ash and carbon dioxide. When diesel is burnt, you're just left with carbon dioxide. But when a nuclear fuel source expires, it's still dangerously radioactive. Even with the relatively small number of nuclear plants we have today, radioactive waste is still a very different problem to tackle. It would be hard enough to find a place to store the waste of 10 locomotives, never mind an entire fleet of engines burning through tons of radioactive material a year. But the biggest issue of all with a nuclear train is safety. Even with hundreds of tons of casing and protection, and even with all the safety protocols and designs put in place, a nuclear reactor will still emit a tiny amount of radiation. While harmless on its own, prolonged exposure to this radiation can be harmful to any living thing that's around it for long enough. Not only is it a risk to the public, but it's a much bigger risk to the footplate crew working on the engine, as they could be working for hours at a time around something that's slowly killing them. Not to mention the biggest safety issue of all being the fact that any severe enough accident that damages the reactor could very easily become a nuclear incident. Put that on wheels and you're basically carting around a mobile time bomb but instead of an explosion, it would blast everyone in a radius with horrible amounts of radiation. On top of this, considering how dangerous a nuclear train crash would be, a nuclear train would most likely need to be guarded at all times as they would certainly be hot targets for terrorism attempts. So, regardless of the upsides, nuclear-powered trains are a pretty unsafe idea, 
The more effective solution and method currently being used across Europe is to simply set up overhead power lines and third rails to power the locomotives, with the electricity being generated in nuclear power stations. This approach is better, but is still problematic in countries like the United States, Canada and Russia, where lines can run for miles on end through the middle of nowhere, making electrification and maintenance a significantly more difficult task. So nuclear trains aren't entirely off the table, but they certainly need refinement. Overall, nuclear trains are another example of a futuristic vision that doesn't hold much practicality in the real world. While nuclear power is still a cleaner alternative to fossil fuels, making a reactor mobile is always going to cause more problems than it'll solve. A shame, really, because some of the designs people came up with certainly made you feel like you were living in the future. Subscribe for more.